Oh, hi, Derry. It's uh, September 2023. Um, this is not a solutions video. It's more of a kind of, I've done a test rig video. Um, so I'm doing some work um, with, uh, in fact, a building site. Uh, I'm doing the infrastructure to uh, put up cameras and uh, security, security IP related devices. And uh, I wanted some way to be able to get to that network. So let me just draw it so you can understand where I am. Oh, by the way, this is a video about tail scale, which is something I found on the interweb. So we're going to be talking about tail scale and uh, how far I've got in trying to actually use it, which is not very far, but it's um, something you can maybe look into yourselves. So I have a, uh, a, um, a home network here and I have a building site over here. Building site. Now, the building site is connected via a dish, uh, a 4G dish, which I've put in, which has got a SIM card in it. Uh, and that SIM card, let's say, goes to a router with Ethernet ports galore. And uh, on, say, that Ethernet, one of those Ethernets is a camera. Uh, so camera. Mm -hmm. Camera. It doesn't look like a camera. It's a camera. Camera. Um, and let's say there's other. Um, the, this is a Microtech product. This is a Microtech product. Uh, and let's say there's another. Let's say there's three or four other cameras. Cam two. Cam three. Uh, so it turns out that if you've got a, a three network or a smarty network, uh, and I'll just give some exact examples. So it, it, I kind of think it means more. So uh, if I look right now, I've got a, um, a 92.40.187.25 address, which amazingly has remained static for the last minute or two, because I found out that Although that's the address, if you sit at a terminal here and say, what's my IP address? Um, the actual Microtik router believes it's connected to a 10 network. So this infrastructure here, when it gets an IP address from the three network, and then, and then this guy actually tries to get, he's got an ethernet here. He's got an ethernet. Uh, he believes he's on a 10 network. 10 dot, let's say 1.2.3. So, and all, all the devices on this network get 10 addresses because they're getting their addresses from the DHCP server here. Is that correct? Yeah. So what happens is if you sit on a terminal here, you sit on your, let's say, Linux or Linux terminal here, I've got a portable Linux computer, and I get a, a, an address from here, I get a 10 address. Um, and so if I, if I, for example, was to run any kind of server here, the server would believe I'm, 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 I'm at a 92 address. But because of this thing called carrier grade NAT, CG NAT, it means to say that you can't have a server that's exporting a port like a web server here because the web server thinks it's got a 92.40.187.25 address in my example, but it hasn't really. So if you sit at home, and for example, say if you've got a VNC server here, or a web server here, and you try to web serve into, my example, 92.40.187.25, your, your, your IP packet gets to the three network, Let's say here. So you'll get you you'll get from your computer here at home. Let's suppose in your computer's in the one nine two dot one six eight dot ten dot x network. So you come out of your network through your router. You go off to the interweb, and you try to go to ninety two dot forty one seven dot twenty five. So you'll hit this network here. But because of carry grade NAT, you, you'll never reach this device nor your target network. So I was trying to see if there's a way to get around this problem. And the, the basic problem is that your 
mobile phone provider, if you've got a data plan with that provider and use that data plan to bridge this remote network to the internet, it's inaccessible because of this carry grade nothing. Uh, so I heard of a product called Telscale and Telscale appears to do the magic thing. What Telscale does is, uh, and again, I've got this far in testing, is you, for example, can run, let's suppose you've got a Linux box on this remote network and you run the Telscale program here. Uh, I've got a description of Telscale. Where are we? Where's me? Where's me? Where's my artificial intelligence hub? Where are we? Okay, well, here we go. Here, according to uh, Mr. Mr. ChatGPT, Tailscale is a VPN service that enables encrypted point-to-point -point connections using a WireGuard protocol. Unlike traditional VPNs, which tunnel all, wet, all network traffic through a central server, Tailscale creates a peer-to-peer -peer mesh network called a Tailnet that offers speed, stability, simplicity, blah, 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 blah. So it's creating this mesh network. So if I start on my machine here, somewhere I've got my screen and exact example. So I'll, I'll give the exact examples. I'm sure the IP addresses are gonna change. Uh, so if I, if I start a Telscale client on my Unix machine here, I've got 100 dot, 104.67.42 and the if I start another Telscale node here I've got another network called 100.99.25.47 so so I can if I sit on this network and I SSH to here I actually get through so let's remind myself, I've got a 4G SIM uh, with, a, with a 92 address shown to the outside world. But inside, I've actually got, let's say, a 10 network. And I've got a Linux computer connected to that whole network. And, and, but when I run the Telscale a program, which is a simple, uh, it's a, it's a, you, get, you get a few packages from the interweb and you run it through a, a, a bash script installer. Um, and then you just do sudo space telscale space up. And if you do sudo space telscale, tel you'll see all the different commands. So you do that at the uh, target end, for example, and under macOS here, I'm running it as an example, uh, it's an app. Um, but when the app is running, I can go to a command line and I can just do SSH in my example here, uh, minus L, my user ID, space the IP address 100.99.25.47, and I get, I get magically straight through, and it does actually work. Um, so it sort of seems to have some promise. Now, there's also a way, apparently, of running a microtik with a container, a container program here and to put the Telscale client into the Microtech. But I somehow think if I did that, I'd only be able to control one Microtech, which is not ideal. So the next thing I tried with varying degrees of success is to start a, a VNC server here. So I've booted this Linux computer, I've got Telscale running. I bought, I boot, um, sorry, I start a VNC server here. And then I try and go, so the VNC server's running, and then I try and VNC into this, which would give me a visual of this guy's screen on here. And I thought, well, that's brilliant, because if I can then do that, I can install on, let's say, this Raspberry Pi. Uh, so this is a Raspberry Pi. So on the Raspberry Pi, we're running Tailscale, and we're running VNC server. Uh, and that didn't initially work at all. I had to configure the real VNC product with cloud connectivity, which is a right pain. So what that means is you install the real VNC server here, uh, and then you, you tell it you're logged in as yourself with your user ID and password, and it adds this into some sort of cloud network 
So then you're really communicating with VNC up to a cloud point and then back down. That does seem to work, but only of course, once the Telscale client is working because VNC uses this IP address. I hope this is not too confusing to everyone. So what I'm saying is that at the end of the day, right now, with a bit of smoke and mirrors, uh, with VNC server logged in here, I can sit here with a VNC client and I can get the screen of this remote computer on this remote 4G connected network, or I can just do an SSH, you know, minus L user ID space IP address. So that would be 100.99.25.47. And that magically gets the combined line of this Unix box here. So it's looking pretty good. This, when you reboot this uh, RPA box with the installation of Telscale as it is, I don't know how I'm going to undo it, it somehow automatically manages to log in. So, oh, by the way, when you use Telscale, you don't have a user ID and password. It asks you to log in via another product like Google. So I'm just using one of my test Google user IDs to log in at either end. Um, and then it, when you log in with the same user ID, obviously, it then creates a network of all the machines that are logged in via that user ID. So to review, the problem is that if you use a 4G SIM, um, you will use carry grade netting, and that means to say that the IP address that you think you are receiving as a device, if you sit here on this Linux box, you say, what's my IP address? It comes up with this IP address. We would actually find that you're actually being given a much different address in here and you'll never be able to get to that IP address to your system. Um, and the carry gate nothing is somehow overridden, well, not somehow, is overridden by installing tail scale on either end. Um, and once that's been installed at either end, I can just do an SSH command and jump from one uh, Unix command line here into my Linux computer here straight away. And if I want to do a GUI session with this target machine, uh, I'm using VNC. And VNC wouldn't work straight away. I had to use this cloud VNC, um, whereby you log in the VNC with a user ID and password. And I think then that opens up a link to a VNC server cloud entity here. So you're really sort of talking up here and down through there. Uh, and when it VNC registers, it registers with this address, not this address. So there you have it. Uh, something's working. Uh, I think this is a bit, uh, unless, you can, unless you can bulletproof this so that this will boot up and assume all of its duties without any user input, I think it's a bit doomed. So my next check is, 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 is what happens when I reboot this system and can I get it to a state where it will automatically do all the right kind of things. And then on this building site, um, once this guy would be started or, you know, you, you just, just somebody pulls the plug out, then they're not necessarily going to, well, they won't be shutting it down. They've got no access. So someone just cuts the power and then puts the power back on. This would need to start up again in exactly the right way so that I can remotely get in to this whole network to, to administrate it. Okay, Dari, that's a long waffle, but I, I think it might be interesting for people who are trying to use their 4G or indeed 5G SIMs on a carry grade NATed network using a product called Tailscale. Okay, thank you for watching.